ready to start our evening worship. If everyone will please stand. I'll ask the ushers to close the door. And those that are in the lobby, if you'll go ahead and come in, we'll get ready to start our service. Are y'all ready to worship tonight? Are y'all ready for a message tonight? Hallelujah. Lord, we love you tonight. Lord, thank you for another opportunity, Lord God. Lord, to come into your presence, Lord God. Lord, to worship and honor you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for all the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us, Lord God. Lord, thank you for life, health, and strength today, Lord God. Lord, thank you for healing and thank you for delivering us, Lord God. Father, I pray that if anyone is standing in the need tonight, Lord God, that their needs are met. Lord, we pray for the manservant that is bringing forth the message, Lord God. Lord, none of him but all of you, Lord God. Lord, we pray peace upon him right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Wow. <laughs> Doug, Doug feels good, right, Doug? Amen. Amen. Everybody just reach your hands this way. Let's just pray. God, we just thank you, Almighty God, for your presence here tonight. We thank you, Almighty God. We just feel that there's a shift in the atmosphere. We thank you, Almighty God, for this supernatural. God, the supernatural is the gift that's stirred up inside of each and every one of us tonight. God, we thank you, Lord, for our, our friends that have come so far tonight, God. And I, I truly believe there's the people that pressed in tonight to come tonight and they come tomorrow morning are going to get exceedingly abundantly more than they even expected when they came. Almighty God, we're, we're here tonight believing in, in signs, wonders, and miracles. Now we're believing in a harvest. We're believing in, that whatever we need tonight, God, that need will be met. We're believing that tonight, God. Now we release our faith. We're believing in you. We're thanking you, God. We just praise you and you honor you, Lord. God, for what you're doing in this house. Amen. Amen. Some powerful teaching. This man, what a blessing he is to me. God, I mean, I, I just don't, I don't even know where I'd be without him, like I said. But I love to hear I love to hear him teach. I love to hear him preach. I'm excited that they're here tonight. And I truly, when Pastor Chris comes, he has a word for the for the church. He has a word for us. And I, I know that you came tonight. You laid aside whatever was going on at home, whatever was happening. And you said, you know what, i got to be in that house tonight. And I want you to get on the phones and invite people to come tomorrow morning. Because usually tonight's a prelude to the, the bang tomorrow. So we're excited about what's going to take place. Stay on your feet and welcome, welcome Pastor Chris Sarno. Hey, Amen. Buddy. Praise the Lord. Come on. Thanks, Bishop. How do you want to stay up, step, 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 real quick? Come on, we're going to worship God for a minute. Just lift your hands to heaven. Aren't you happy to be here? Look at you guys. Come out on a Friday night. Clap for yourself. Come on, somebody. Let's just lift our hands to heaven. Thank the Lord. Lord, we just thank you, Father. We need you. We've got to have you supernaturally move and do what you want to do. And, Lord, we just thank you that we're on time what it is you want us to release in this moment, in this season. And, Lord, we thank you in advance. We, we just give you the praise and the glory because we need you. We need you to touch hearts and move in our midst. And we need you to do what you want to do in the now. We don't want to, we don't want to miss the moment. We want to receive what heaven has for us. And we just thank you, Lord. We believe that heaven's touching earth. And we believe that as heaven touches earth, we're going to be transformed. We believe that. We believe that something's taking place now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Holy Spirit, you have your will. Have your way. Let the power of God move supernaturally. Touch people's lives right now. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For moving burdens and destroying yokes. Thank you, Lord, that some, something supernatural is taking place right now. Thank you, Lord, that as your presence fills this house, God, you're removing weights or yokes are being destroyed. Bondages are being broken. Not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit. The Spirit of God is going to move in your life right now. Touch you, set you free, and deliver you from the pain of the past. And deliver you and set you free from the things that are trying to hold you back. The assignments of the enemy are being broken off your life. Just thank you, Lord, for your anointing. I thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit. Filling them, touching them. Rearranging, 
moving supernaturally. And I thank you, Lord, for the power and the presence. Thank you for your power and your presence in this house. Thank you, Lord. You're their deliverer. You're their deliverer today, right now. Right now. Not, not another minute, not another second. Now. Faith is now. Right now in Jesus' name. Now. In the name of Jesus. Burdens have to be lifted. Yokes have to be destroyed. Heaviness is being removed. Being released off your life. Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for what you're going to do. We thank you how you're doing it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and everybody said, Amen. Well, praise the Lord. Clap for yourself. You did good. I want you, I don't want you to leave this atmosphere. Is that okay? I sound good. Whatever you did sounds great. It's perfect. Uh, I like hearing, yeah, I like, yeah, leave me whatever you did. It's good. Yeah, I like hearing myself. That's what makes me happy. <laughs> Next time my wife tells me, I'm going to tell her, I like hearing myself. I'll go to church. Hallelujah. You know, I've been trying to get this, you know, I want you to, um, I really want you to catch what I'm saying. It's really kind of different. Um, I believe this, um, that we're in a season where things are shifting. And I'm not going to just, the body in general is a little displaced, the body of Christ. And, um, you know, I can't shake this. I try to go another way, but uh, I'm not going to shake it, so I'm just going to go with it. And then we'll just stay in it. Is that all right? I want you to understand that so what I tell you tonight, Katrina, I'm not just saying hype. Other times I come to you with stuff and I just tell you what's going down and you know. But this is one of those archive messages you stick in the wall somewhere and, and you remember it. Because I believe this with all my heart. We're still not out of that place of, of, of understanding that sometimes there's dry seasons and your spiritual life is not really going where you want it to go. And the body in general, you know, it was funny. I got to go on like a little mini tour, and uh, I kind of felt like everywhere I was going, God kept releasing me and speaking on this subject of what do you do when your spiritual life just ain't doing it no more. You know what I mean? It's just like, it's kind of like a vacuum void, or I don't know how to explain it. You know, it's kind of like my God thing just ain't clicking right. You know what I mean? I don't know how to say it any other way. You know, like my relationship is good. But it's not great. It's just kind of going through the motions or something, you know. And what I want you to know is that um, uh, how do you be spiritually strong? I could finish it probably like in two days, which would be good. We'll hit it again. But how do I maintain spiritual strength? That's not easy. Anybody could start something. It's going to take something to finish something and finish it strong. Most people don't want to hear this kind of stuff. Go most church day, you know, my, I'm teaching this stuff in the church. The attendance goes down. Why? Because nobody, people don't want, they want to tell them something fun. This ain't fun. You know what I mean? This is about you spiritually reaching your destiny. That's not, you know, tell me about, you know, supernatural whatever. I don't, you know, it's good. This is more supernatural than anything because your destiny is up to you, whether we're going to see it or not. I've been talking about purpose, you know, and find, you know, you're God, you're the, you're, you're the only one of you in the world. There's not another one. There's a lot riding on you. Seriously, look at your neighbor and say, there's a lot riding on you. Look at the other one. There's a lot riding on you. Okay, I'm telling you, there's only one of you in the world. There's not another you. If you don't do it, guess what? It don't get done. So you might, I don't know who told you you're not important, but they lied. I'm serious. I'm going to talk to you tonight. Now, you got to receive what I say, but I'm, gonna, I'm just going to speak to you from my heart. I'm not going to get all fancy. But I want you to know you're important and you're unique. You know, try to be like everybody else. Why try to be like everybody else? You're you. I don't need to be nobody else. I ain't supposed to be nobody else. All right? You know, Got a good buddy of mine said something a long time ago. Uh, you know, he said, uh, he said, God made you original. Don't die a copy. Right. You know what I'm saying? You're original. Don't you? Know, and I'm serious. I'm being serious because there's a problem. You look in the mirror. You don't like the way you look. We got all this identity crisis. We're all messed up because we think we're supposed to be something not. You know, I said this in the church. You're either gonna see. Everybody came out of Adam. Everybody. So you're either gonna identify with Adam, the first one or the second one. The second one, the Christ, it's real, right? You got, got Adam number one's a mess. He's disobedient. Adam number two, he said the second Adam. God never came out of himself. And we never came out of Adam. The only way we come out of Adam is through transformation of revelation. 
You've got to get a revelation of who you are. Otherwise, you'll act like Adam the rest of your life. But you've got a supernatural God on the inside looking to lead you guys. Here's what happens. We go through seasons where it's heavy and it's not easy and we think something's broken. The next two days, I can transform your life. I'm telling you, if you listen to me, I'm just saying hi, this is really good. Because I'm timely in the body. Because I went to California, really did. I went to California, came back, and I went to California. I couldn't get rid of it. I stopped off, did this thing. I'm going, God, what's going on? He's like, I'm doing it in the body. What happens is this. We go through seasons, they're quiet. And it seems like almost everything gets so quiet, and we don't know how to navigate in the quiet season. And usually what we do is we think we've done something wrong to make it go quiet. But it's not quiet because you've done something wrong. It's quiet because you're growing up. You understand? Yeah, I, you know, I, thought I was in the church one day. I run around. I said, the teacher don't talk during the test. Why? Because you should have been paying attention when the teacher was teaching. Now that you're in the test and you want to know, <laughs> come on, right? Now you want to know, can I, remember when you were a kid? Come on, you know what I'm talking you try to say something during the test, you get yelled at. Yeah. Why? Ain't no talking during the test. You should have been paying attention in math class. Come on, somebody. Right? Yeah, you get in trouble for that now. Ain't no questions now. Too late for the questions, right? So, so what happens is I can really help you. Because this is what happens. Like your word time, your prayer time, sometimes your spirit life, it seems like, you know, it's kind of all slowed down in process. And you kind of almost feel... This disjoint because you're saying, man, what am I, am I doing something wrong? I don't get what's going on. I don't understand what's happening. It's not as fun as maybe it was. It's not as exciting. You don't have the feeling. You know, it's kind of dry. It's a little, it's a little, bit, it's kind of beat. You know what I mean? Kind of stinks. You know what I mean? <laughs> really does, you know? And you're thinking what's going on. So I'm going to help you tonight because if you're in that place, it's okay because we're going to help you navigate what you cannot see, and help you get there. I got a scripture for you. I have it in the New Living Translation. I don't know if you have that, but that's okay. Because Job 23, 7, I'm going to give you Job 23, 7 through 10. Now, I don't know about you, but you're going to get an understanding of the Word of God. And, and in, in the New Living Translation, don't put it up. You can put it up there, right? Can you do Job 23, 7, just in case somebody doesn't have a Bible? I don't know if you got the NLT. If you don't, I do. So I'm going to read it, okay? But let them put it up there in the King James or whatever they got, and we'll take it from there. But I don't want you, I'm, I'm not going to keep you like all night. I'm going to, I'm going to get in here. But I'm going to tell you what's going to happen in the next two days. This, no, no, listen to me. I'm going to tell you right here now. I, I'm, Bishop's right. Get on the phone and get here tomorrow. Change your plans. Now listen to me. Let me tell you what. If you're in this place I'm talking about, I'm going to pray for everybody like tomorrow. I'll pray for people tonight, but like, tomorrow I'm going to pray for everybody. I'm going to break the thing wide open. Because I've been feeling, no, I'm being serious. She'll tell you, we've been funky at home. Yeah. You know, like church is funky. The whole body's funky. And it, because it's trying to transition from one place to the next place, and we're not navigating right. And the only thing that's going to get us out is the anointing. Yeah. And we're going to have to get the power of God to hit the thing. So we'll just break it here, and we'll break it open, and we'll get you in a spot. Sometimes, you know, you need a little push to get up the mountain. We're going to push you up over the mountain and help you get there. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you need a little bit like, come on, come on, we can do this thing. You know what I mean? But sometimes you're kind of like, you're dragging, you know, it's kind of heavy. We're going to break that thing. The Bible says the anointing breaks the yoke. It destroys the yoke. It's going to help you. Dream again, see it again, get excited about it again. Get excited about church, you know what I mean? Remember when you got excited about being the parking lot guy? You used to get excited about being the parking lot. Now you're like bored with the parking lot. Remember when you're excited being an usher? Now you want to like punch somebody in the parking lot. Come on, somebody. Right? You don't want to see another kid. You don't want to work. In I don't want to make sermons no more. You're bored. You want to know why? Because it gets to the point sometimes where it gets almost disjointed and you don't know why. And I'm going to read it in this. And then I'm going to read it in New Living Translation. It's going to help you. Okay? Okay, they are the righteous might dispute with him, so shall I be delivered from every, uh, from, forever from my judge, okay? And it reads a little different in the King James. The NLT, if you got it, it's great. I'm going to read it to you, but let's just go. So let's read verse 8, and then we're going to come back to me, okay? Go to verse 8. Everybody say verse 8. Praise the Lord. I know those things are a little wild. Behold, I go forward, but he is not there. Backward, I cannot perceive him. Okay? Now, let me read it to you. This, I'm, I'm stealing my own thunder, so I'm not going to use that translation. All right? Here's what it says. Ready? New Living Translation, Job 23, 7. I go east, but he ain't there. I go west, I can't find him. He's talking about God. 
I don't see him in the north. He is hidden. I turn in the south. I can't find him. But he knows where I'm going. This is what happens with God. We go looking for God. He ain't nowhere to be found. He knows where you are though. Now the thing is this. In, in Job's life. What Job said. I'm looking for him. But I can't find him. But he knows where you are. Which means what? He's okay with the idea of understanding where you're at. You got to figure out where he is. And what do I mean by that? You go looking for God and you can't find him. Everybody in this room went looking for God and couldn't find him. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. But the feelings sometimes leave the experience. And when the feelings leave the experience, we don't think he's in the experience anymore. But he is because he knows exactly where you are. He didn't leave you. You just can't perceive that he's there. When that happens, that's when it's hard to do what you don't feel you're doing right. What happens is, I don't feel him. I don't think I'm experiencing him. It's easy to do the church things of God and the relationship things of God when the feelings are in the thing. When the feelings leave, can you still do what you're supposed to do? And can you still maintain the same level of spirituality in your doing of them? See, that's the key. See, the feelings are gone. But can you still maintain the spiritual level of doing it when you can't feel it? And that's what Job said. I don't know where he is. I can't find him. I went north, he ain't there. I went south, he ain't there. I went east, I went west, I can't perceive there. God's out. What is he trying to say? What he's trying to say is it got quiet quick. And when it got quiet, it's harder to maintain what you're supposed to do when you don't feel like what you're doing is working. That's the biggest part. Because what people do then is instead of going forward, they draw back thinking, well, first thing comes out your mouth, what am I doing wrong? Because if I'm not doing something wrong, why would I be experiencing the absence of God's presence from my life? I'm good at this. You don't want me fixing your car. Just keep me in this lane. Okay. Now, look, right? <laughs> come, come on, right? Just hear me, though, right? This is true. You're going to go. And now, look, you, say, you get the rookies in the church. You know, I get all the rookies in my church. You know, oh, no, that didn't ever happen to me. Baby, you ain't been around long enough. You stick around. Let me tell you, I used to hate Job. Now I understand Job. Remember? Remember you didn't understand? You young buck, you don't remember your Job. He was, Job was a complete moron, had no faith. First 10 years, Job was a moron with no faith. Now Job is my friend. <laughs> and I, I, Bishop Jakes one time said that scripture. I almost shut the TV off. Though he slay me. Oh. I said, man, I'm going to shut the thing off. I said, God don't slay nobody. Don't say that. Right? You know, you think, Joe, what Joe say? Though he slay me, yet I'll still praise him. <laughs> yet I'll still what? I'm going to praise him anyway, right? Yet I'm still going to serve. What? It don't make no sense. See, pain is a privilege. <laughs> you ain't learned nothing through you've been through some pain. Yeah, <laughs> you got to go through some pain. God will use pain. God, I'm going to tell you right now, God will use pain. Self-afflicted. Demon possessed that people for I don't care how it got. God will use it because without it, you ain't going to grow. You ain't going to grow without no pain. I'm going to set myself free and go light everybody on fire. Come on. You, you got to have some pain. If you ain't been through some pain, you don't understand nothing. Everybody's a critic until they've been through something. You got something to say about everybody until you go through something. Right? Like why these people praise God like that? I used to have this dude, you weren't around for the towel, man. Oh, my God, this guy used to take a towel, right? This guy. He used to bang the floor at the Miracle Center. I swear to God, I thought he was going to break the beams. He was a big old man. He'd come in there with a towel, right? And he'd start in the beams. He'd make the whole church shake. The place is on wood. He'd be like, ha! Be, ha! He'd be ha! He'd be like, with the towel. And I was like, oh, my God, he's going to make people leave. Ha! He go crazy. I was like, what in the world? This dude's crazy. I'm getting everybody nervous. New people are freaking out. He started going through the towel thing and shaking the floor in the church. And I, I'm a critic. I'm the pastor of the church. I'm a critic. There's something wrong with you, bro. Ain't no reason you need to be doing that. Make a spectacle out of yourself and you got sweat. You're going to break the floor. 
I, I, they had put a jack. Honest to God, they jacked the beam, the rafter up because I think he weakened that side of the building over the years. I'm, I'm not kidding. They had to do it one time. They went under there with pump jacks, and they leave them in there. You know, I'm telling the truth. And they left them in there because the thing's falling apart. Because the guy, towel guy, is flipping out on Sunday doing his thing. And people would actually come. What is wrong with I said, I don't know. He's, you know, I'm a critic. I tell him one day he came in my office and said, Pastor, I got to tell you something. I said, what? He said, I was shot out on crack cocaine for 10 years of my life, living in the homeless dump. I was shot out and screwed up. And now I come to church. That's why I prayed. You know what I said? I never critiqued another person's praise a day in my life. People in the church will say, what's wrong with them? I said, you don't know the hell they've been through. That's why they jump like that. You don't know the hell that dude's been through. No. Don't say nothing. We have Big Steve. Remember Big Steve? Yeah, Big Steve. Oh, uh, man, Big Steve, come. You don't know the hell you've been through. Oh, they killed me almost and left me in a dumpster. I said, what? No wonder why you got that kind of praise, bro. Leave him alone. <laughs> why? Did they, they beat you with bullpen bats and throw you in a dumpster? Okay, then be quiet. Don't critique his praise. You don't know what he's been through. You don't know, you don't know what somebody walked through. You don't understand. You've been through some pain. You shut up quick. Right? Job understood, I can't understand God. And when Job was saying, though he slay me, still I'm going to obey him. I don't understand the pain I'm going through. I don't understand the pressure I got. I can't figure it out. Theologically, it makes no sense. Homolutically, it makes no sense. None of this makes sense, but I'm walking through it. I can't understand it, but I understand this. I might not be in control of circumstances, but I'm going to be in control of how I respond to circumstances. Amen. And what starts happening is you start understanding something that it's called the, it gets like a hidden season. And in the minute of this thing, it's where you'll grow beyond maybe any other season of your life. It makes no sense. You say, how could the absence of presence produce something? It's uncomfortable. But the absence of his presence can produce a faith in you that only his absence of presence can. Because without the absence of presence, I don't need no faith to still keep believing that he's there. But I'll go slow. Without the absence of presence, how can I tell he's going to be faithful when I can't see him navigating me? I don't like the process, but the other side of it, through the pain, is where the privilege is waiting for me. Most people, don't, most people can't handle the process, so they get out because I don't like the discomfort in the moment that I'm in. And I'd rather go back to where I was than have to go forward and go where I'm going because it's easier for me where I can see where I came from. Children of Israel, seeing where they came from, don't make no sense, right? They're like, why would you want to go back to bondage? Because I understood bondage. I could see bondage. I navigated in bondage. Will you try to take me where I can't see where I'm going without you thinking your presence is with me. Because what did they say? God, why would you bring us out here to die? We don't see you in the moment. Moses always had to keep reinforcing that God's still with us. And if moments that they didn't understand God being with them, guess what they did? They were ready to go back to the slop house they came from. Why? Because where there is absence of presence, there is absence of vision. Where there is absence of vision, I can't see where I'm going. I can't navigate my life right. So what do you got to do? You got to make sure you could see even when you don't know where you're going. How do you do that? You know that his presence is with you no matter what. That's what I'm going to talk to you today about. So what do we do? We have to put these processes in. Because God's pre you think like in the middle of your moments of pain and stuff, life, just life. Life produces pain. You ain't been through, everybody's been through something. But here's the thing. Absence of presence does not mean disqualification. Absence of presence means promotion. Okay? Now watch me. I'm going to show you. It's miserable when you go through it, but stick me. I've been there. Okay? God one time, like for me, whatever it was, he, he pulled it back. It'll cost your faith too much not to let it happen. Okay? I'm going to say this off. It's going to cost your faith too much not to go through the process. Because if God's going to keep constantly navigating in each and every moment, it ain't going to take no faith to pull it off. Hear me. It it get when it gets quiet. One t like the one time I was there, God got quiet. When God got quiet, I got mad. But then after I figured out mad was stupid, sit back and relax. I told God, "Don't talk to me. You're doing me a favor." 
and, and I didn't get it at the moment, Jared, because I didn't know what was going on. I said, do me a favor. Don't talk to me. Don't, do me, don't even answer a prayer. How's that, bro? Don't answer no prayers. Shut down heaven. Don't talk to me. Leave me alone and see if I won't keep doing what I'm doing right now. Because if you want to see if I can go through something to keep doing what I'm supposed to be doing, watch me. And do me a favor. Don't mess me up. Because if you talk, you might jack my faith up if you say something to me in the conversation. So I'm ornery sometimes, but it helps me make it and survive. I, I, I gave God like one of these. I'm going to talk to you, but don't talk back because I'm just going to chill for a minute. You, if, if, let me try. If a lightning bolt didn't come out yet and take me out, I'm all right. So <laughs> be calm and be cool. I was like one of these. I was like, God, let me tell you, me and you going to have a little talk. and be a good talk because everybody had a little God talk. I said, I'm going to do the talk and just time out for a minute. Just do a little listen. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pray. Don't answer my prayer. I'm going to do this. Don't talk back. I'm going to do that. Don't say nothing. Don't breathe on me. Don't, don't. Don't make, a, don't make an angel come fly by and wind go by. I don't need none of that. Don't, don't do nothing. Don't say nothing. Don't touch me. Don't goose bump me. Don't let a breeze. Don't let a twinge in the back of my head. Don't let the anointing come in my hand. Don't let nothing touch my feet. I don't need a shout. I don't need a dance. I don't need nothing. All I need to let you know is this, that no matter what it looks like and what it feels like, don't jack my faith up and say nothing right now, God. I'm still going to do what I'm going to do, even though I don't have no idea what's going on. So if you're looking from heaven and parting the clouds just to see if I'm going to continue to do what I'm supposed to do, even when I'm absent of your presence and I don't understand what's going on, you could guarantee this. Sarn will be up tomorrow going to work. Why? Because I got to understand something here that when his presence is gone, that doesn't mean he's left the situation or the circumstance. When his presence is gone, he just slipped back to see what you're going to do. It's like your kid. You watched him. I do it in school. I do this, right? You lean back sometimes. And watch what they do when they don't think you're watching. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I send them to school, right? Let them go play with the other kids, right? You let them go do What do you do? Come on, Mom, what do you want to do? You want to go in there and tell them exactly what to do. But I tell my kid, and he go to school the other day, I say, hey, punch the guy in the head that was getting rude. No, Daddy, you can't do that. I said, no, punch him in the head. It'd be all right. I'll get you out of trouble. Mother thinks I'm crazy. I said, go to school. No, 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 no. I said, punch him in the head and just give him a sock in the face. He goes, no, you get referral. You get in trouble. What am I doing? I'm training him. It seems it's goofy training. It's backward training, but it's not. I want to see what it's. If he tells me I'm going to go punch him in the face, I'm going to say, you can't do that, bro. Yeah. Come on, wake up. But I want to see what he does on his own because I've been what? I've been cultivating him yeah. for a while. Yeah. I've been cultivating to have his own response yeah. when I'm not there. So when I'm there, I try to what? Work up a response out of him of what he's going to do when I'm not there. Then what do I do? I give him a little test. I let him go by himself. And I slip back and watch how he responds. Why? Because I'm the teacher and I've been talking over there. But he's got the test. He's walking through life. That's what God does. He leans back from the pearly gate or wherever he's chilling up there. And he goes like this. Let me see what you're going to do. Because what good is all the instruction and what good is all the information if you ain't getting ready to activate it? So the thing is this. Job said it like this. He said, I go looking for your presence. Can't find it. I go looking for your presence. I don't know what's going on. Watch this. Here's the deal. Okay? Check this out. What do I do when God seems distant? Okay? Now, now don't. The most common mistake that we make is this. We seek the experience more than seeking God. We look for the feelings, and if that's not happening, we conclude that the worship was wrong. Everything we do. If we don't get a feeling, what? Come on, right? What do we think? Something's wrong. Don't look like it's working out right. What do we think? Something's wrong. Right? Everything's wrong. No, 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 no. I'm going to tell you what. Guess what? If you don't see it, you might just be because you're doing something right. Watch this. Ready? Isaiah 8, 17. The Lord, Isaiah 8, 17. You doing okay? You getting it? You seeing it? Okay. Now, you don't want to, you know, you want, you want to steer clear. You want to steer clear from walking in the way of sin. That's a no-brainer. But here's the deal. What do I do when I'm doing the right things and it doesn't look like stuff's working out the way it should? The question all hands is, you got that Isaiah 8, 17? If you can, pop it up there. 
Isaiah said kind of like what Job said. I'm, I'm looking for him and it ain't happening. Why? Because I ain't so looking. And I will wait for the Lord who is hiding his face from the house of Jacob. And I will look for a hope in him. That's what happens. When we don't see or feel God's presence in the situation, that's when we feel hopeless. Hope seems like it's been deferred when you don't feel or see God in the moment. And when you don't have no hope, we got a problem. Because without confident expectation that something's going to change, now we don't think the situation's going to change. Because why? It's hopeless. This is what I'm trying to get you to understand. What do I do when it feels like nothing's going in the right direction? Here you go. Write this down. What do I do when God seems distant? God is real no matter how you feel. Okay? It's easy to worship God when things are going great, when your life is going good, you got food provided, friends, family, health, happy situation, everything. But circumstances are not always pleasant. How do you worship God then? What do you do when God seems like he's a million miles away? The deepest level of worship is praising God in spite of the pain, in spite of the trial, trusting him when you're tempted, surrendering while you're suffering, and loving him when he seems distant. Do guys, this is it. Now, you're going to think this is crazy, but this is training. See, what I'm telling you right now, these seasons when we walk in this place are the greatest advancement of your spiritual life. Because these ain't always fun. But if you can get through it, and kind of like, I don't want to say this, but if you could pass the test and not quit in the turmoil, you could come out the other side stronger than you've ever been. Why? Because this thing should have took me out, but it ain't taking me out. This thing should have knocked me out, but it ain't knocking me out. This thing should have stopped me, but it ain't stopping me. And what it is this, just when I think I'm maybe not doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing, I'm still working this thing out. Watch this. Here's what happens. I'm getting ready. Okay. I'm going forward. I'm making these steps. They're, I'm making these steps. I'm making these steps. I'm making these steps. I'm pushing. Guess what? I ain't got no feeling in the push. I, ain't, I don't have no direction in the push. I don't have no guidance in the push. I'm just doing what I think I'm supposed to do in the minute of the moment. And what I think I'm doing might not be exactly what I'm supposed to be doing, but I'm doing the best I can in the spot when I don't know. And I'm saying, because I'm going to show you right now, you rebuked it, nothing happened to it. Come on. Come on. I'm a word of faith guy all day long. But you rebuked it, nothing happened. You bound it, it's still loose. Come on. <laughs> you, come on. Hey, help me out, right? You, you, you rebuked it. You cast it out. It came back. You did something going on, right? You're doing everything you possibly can do to get the breakthrough, and it doesn't seem like certain things are breaking the way they're supposed to be breaking, moving the way they're supposed to be moving, doing the way. It seems like the timeline that I'm on and the timeline that it's heaven on are two different distances, miracle miles away, and I don't understand what's going on, but the stuff that's supposed to be working sometimes don't look like it's working. And I'm going to say this, hold my word of faith title just for a minute, leave me alone. I think God sometimes just wants to see what we're going to do when it don't look like it's working. Because David, I'm going to show you David. David was a man after God's own heart. David was maybe one of the most of the closest people to God. Right? David, what's David's number one complaint? Go read Psalms. God, where are you in the middle of my life? I'm going to show it to you. See, that didn't go over big because you didn't catch it yet, but you will. Go slow with me. Just here. Let me give you some stuff. I'm going to go. I'm going to jump down. David. Okay, you with me? You all right? David probably had one of the closest friendships, you with me, with God out of anybody. God took pleasure in calling him a man after his own heart. If God calls you man after your own heart, you got to have some kind of characteristics that God likes. Bishop's a really, really, really good friend of mine. He's like one of my best friends. He got to have something that I, we don't talk but five, five times every five years. Come on, no. You know what I'm saying? He got, why would you say the guy's close? Because something about him is connected. He said he's a man after his own heart. Obviously, David and God were close. God said, I got nobody like him. Come on, right? Okay, and what's David's, one of David's most frequent complaint about God? 
his absence from his life. So this guy's close to God. And his number one complaint, go read something. Go home tonight and read the book of Psalms. Oh, God, where are you? Oh, God, why'd you leave? God. David said, I went to heaven. You were there. I went to hell. You're everywhere. But I don't know where you are in my life. <laughs> Come on, man. This guy went through. He did. He did. They, here, I right, want quote. David's quotes. Ready? I'll just give you a couple. Lord, why are you standing aloof? Why have you forsaken me? Why do you remain so distant? Why do you ignore my cries for help? Why have you abandoned me? Of course, God hadn't really left David, and he doesn't leave you. He's promised that. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. But what was the problem? God admits sometimes he might slide back, but here's the thing. I'm going to read something to you that, this, that I, I, I quote this man. He said this. He said, you wake up one morning, and all your spiritual feelings are gone. You pray, nothing happens. You rebuke the devil. doesn't change anything. You go through spiritual exercises. You have your friends pray for you. You confess every sin you've ever committed, everything you can imagine. You go around asking for forgiveness. Every one of you know. You fast, still nothing. <laughs> you begin to wonder, how long is this spiritual gloom might last? Days, weeks, months? Will it ever end? It feels as if your prayers simply bounce off the ceiling and under desperation, and you cry out, what in the world is the matter with me? The truth is, there's nothing wrong with you. This is a normal part of the testing and maturing of your relationship with God. Every Christian goes through it, and at least once in your life, maybe several times, it's painful, it's disconcerting, but it's absolutely vital for the development of your faith. Because how in the world can you trust your faith if it's never been tested? How can I trust my relationship with God unless my relationship with God gets tested? How am I going to know? What, what, what does it take to believe him if you got everything? Come on. How, what does it take? What does it take to believe God? If, if you got it in your hand. It doesn't take nothing to believe God if you got it in your hand. Who likes the process? No one. Because it seems like, now watch this. I can spin this if you'll stay with me. It, it seems like the absence of presence is a problem, but really the absence of presence might just be the key to the greatest promotion of my life. Question, if I wasn't ready for this season, why would I be here? Think about it. Now I'm going to spin it a little bit just trying to help you because it was a little gloomy here for a minute. It, it, come on, right? If, it, if I wasn't ready to take the test, now God ain't bringing none of this stuff up. You know what I mean? God don't bring destruction. You understand? I'm, you guys are beyond that. He don't bring the destruction. He ain't trying to bring pain in your life. He ain't bringing some goofiness in your life. But I'm going to tell you what he's going to do. He's going to use every ounce of it. He use every stinking ounce of it to get you to see that he's God. How does he do that? I'll show you exactly how he does that. You know what he does? He takes, see, because this is the thing. You ready for this? Now, this is so bad, but it's so good. Okay? In my weakness is the only place I could find this source that I need him. See, this is what happens. See, here's what happens with God. In your, see, I'm a confession person. We confess. But my confession of weakness is not public. My confession of weakness is private. When my confession of weakness is private, then I go to the source to give me what? The solution to the problem I'm walking through. My, my, I'm not going to confess to him what, what I'm, what I'm pu publicly challenged with. Why? Because I ain't going to let that out in the atmosphere. That's just me. I don't go walking around talking weak, defeat, and all that drama. You don't do that. You know what you do, Joe? You go and tell your, your heavenly father. He's the only one that understands you. And that's where you can get real and say, you know what? I don't think I can face this. That's okay. Because watch this. In the confession of my weakness, I find my strength. And I'm going to tell you something right here now. Look at me. You ain't going to like this, okay? But get ready for it. The faster you get there, the better off you are. Because here's the problem. You think you ain't going to get there? Everybody in this room going to get there. Why? Because I don't care how strong you are. What's going to happen is this. You will break yourself trying to maintain what you cannot and we're not meant to maintain. Because let me tell you something about this. God's got to know that you need him in this thing. And he ain't going to bring the problem, but he's sure going to let you know that you can't do it without him. 
And until you understand that, guess what's going to happen? You're going to carry it in your own strength, and you can only do that so far. And then sooner or later, what you figure out is bump this. I need some help. So what am I going to do? I'm going to disconnect, and I'm going to go. Now I'm going to go get real. So in my time of private confession, it's not a place of weakness. It's a place of empowerment because absence from his presence in my situation doesn't mean he's not with me. Absence from his presence in my situation allows me to recognize I've got to pull on his strength because I can't do it in my own strength. You know what I just said? Absence from his presence in the moment makes me go look for him. You better catch me. I don't need him if I can pull it off. It's going to get harder. Why is it going to get harder? Because I can do this thing now. Oh, you ain't listening to me. I can do this now. I don't need God to do this. So when he does, he shifts the gear. See if you can do this without me. He backs up. What you going to do now, kid? I, ain't, I can't figure it out. That's why you got to come get me because another level is waiting for you. You mastered this place. You mastered this level. This ain't kindergarten no more. You mastered this level, but now I got another level. Oh, he do it with the money. Oh, he do it with the money. He do it with the, he'll do it with the money. He's like, oh, how you got it? Oh, you got hundreds figured out? Now we're going for thousands. Some of you are like, can we work on 20s? <laughs> work where you got to work with. Yeah, it's true. He start with fives. Come on. He says work with change. We got to start where you got. <laughs> Think about it, though. Didn't he? Trust me. Trust me. Trust me. Keith Moore said something. I was in Bible school. I never understood what that joker was talking about. You know, you watch him on TV. That's why I name drop. He was my Bible school teacher. He said, when I started sowing in hundreds, I started reaping in hundreds. When I started sowing in thousands, I started reaping in thousands. When I started operating in tens of thousands, I started reaping in tens of thousands. He gave another pastor a million dollars. He wrote a million dollar check. Gave, did it two, three times. He gave Raymond. I don't know who knows why, but I've got to be quiet. TV. He gave this one. He gave three different ministries million dollar offerings. Guess what he's reaping in? Millions. You get nervous. God said, no. You know what I did? I worked on thousands, then I stepped out, and he had to go to another place where he needed. It's everything you do. What? I'm telling you, it's everything you do. God then goes, do you need me? Yeah, because I can't pull it. Well, good, come find me. The discomfort drives me to him. Some people allow the discomfort to drive them away from him. That's the mistake, because that's what the enemy tries to say. Well, God left your life. I set you free. Buy the CD. Hope to God you got one. I'm telling you, buy it, package it, put it in your house. Every other once in a while, you feel funky. You go put that thing in, this will straighten you out. God's absence of presence in my life is not abandonment. He didn't leave. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He don't lie. You know what it is? It's gotten you to a place. Now you got to go find them. Because if you could do them by yourself, you wouldn't need them. Hello? You just pull it off with your own little ability. You know what I'm saying? You ever get, you ever get like that jerky mood? You ever been like jerky? You know, you ever get, like how many know how to fix it? Like you got a bike, right? You got the bike, motorcycle, right? Right? Say he gets jerky. Like, man, I'm fixing the bike. I'm going to my bike. Build my bike. He started bending parts and doing stuff. He's going to do it all by himself. You ever get jerky? You know, you get that jerky attitude. Like, I got to build, build it all. I can build a carburetor, put the tires on it. I'm a spoke man, a gasket man. I'm an every kind of man, bike man. Right? And you get stumped. You ever get mad? You so mad? Oh, you're almost cussing in the garage, right? Like, oh, this big thing. And you know you want to call Joel. You know, like, I call Joel. He can help me, but I ain't calling Joel. I'm going to do it myself. I'm a bike man. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? I'm using him as an analogy. He probably ain't like that. Yeah, I ain't talking to nobody. Probably. He a bike man. Gonna get spiked. Got it all. I got it. Right? <laughs> what are you, right? You move for the G. I'm doing it by myself. He got a Jeep, right? He, that's his Harley. Right? That's what he's telling me. His, he got his Harley parked out there. He's got four wheels. <laughs> I ain't gonna make no fun. Because that'd be mine too. So I, 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 that'd be mine too. So I can't bust your chops with the bike. Right? But that, that's it. Yeah, hey, praise the Lord, man. Whatever you gotta do. Right? So uh, you gotta do it. You gonna take the, the roof off? Yeah, I'm gonna do everything. I'm gonna build everything by myself. But what happens is what? You got to get to the place where you figure out some things I can't just do by myself. Right? And then what do we do? You pick up the phone and say, hey, Joel, can you come help me? Hey, can you, can you, yeah, he, he said I got Pastor Stacy to help me lift the roof. Well, all the women should know this by now. You got this off here. Yeah, he going to fix it. Watch this. Yeah, okay. Wait till he's, he be calling. Ten minutes, he be screaming, come help me. Then he's going to be mad. Get this side. Get the other side. <laughs> right? You know he did it. 
She's like, you didn't need no help. You know what you should tell them? You didn't need no help. Did you get them? Yeah, you didn't need no help. Now do it yourself, joker. Right? 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 But what? But what happens? Don't, don't, right? And then what happens is what? We humble ourselves. Right? What do we do? Don't we do that? We do what? We humble ourselves. And what do we say? We need help. Question. What would, what, now watch this. Was that weakness needing help? No. No. It wasn't weakness. It was what? I figured out I can't do this by myself without I got God. So did I confess my weakness? No, I confessed my strength is not in me alone. It's in me and God. See, I used the human analogy, but did you get it? Like, what, what clue would you say? I got I got it. God's like, okay. But you got it in your strength? Or you got it in my strength with you? Am I the one strengthening you, or you think you can pull this off by yourself? So you go through these little seasons, okay? Give me like 10, 15 more minutes. I'm praying for people. You see it? Are you getting it? So why, why, why does not the challenge become great? Because you wouldn't go looking for God if it wasn't a greater challenge. Yeah. Now, are you saying that, oh, did you saying the drama, God brought the drama? No, and God didn't bring no drama. God don't bring no drama. We got to use the drama to help you understand you need him. Here's David, right? Man after God's own heart. What was his number one gripe? God, why is my life absent of your presence? And all the while, God was with him. Just because you don't feel God, see God, hear God, doesn't mean God left. Maybe he just slipped back a little bit to see what you're going to do when you can't hear, see. And hey, come on, somebody. Can you still do it? That's when most people flake out. I'm reading my Bible, but it don't feel like I read my Bible when I first read my Bible. Can you kill us? When I first read my Bible, it's like lights were coming out of it. I read it. I said, in the beginning, whoo, revelation. <laughs> Matthew, wow. Hallelujah. Right? Come on, right? Come on, right? Now it's like a dry piece of toast. You're like, praise a God in heaven. I got to read this. Thing. Bishop's got a 90-day reading plan. He's goofy. Ah, rah, 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 rah. Trying to read y'all. Right? Remember when you got filled with the Holy Ghost? Oh, you know the Holy Ghost talking to you, right? You're all Baptist back in the day. Now you're all straightened out. Come on, right? Y'all had Holy Ghost for you. I was Catholic. I was so screwed up. I didn't even know there was a Holy Ghost. Come on. Yeah. Right? I didn't know you get filled with the Holy Ghost. No way. Right? I get filled with the Holy Ghost. I get this. I I'm praying, man. Oh, my God. I'm lighting the house off. My dad got scared. Come in the house one day. said, I don't know what this kid is doing. He, I go in the room. I try to, like, lock down, you know, because I'm, I'm in there. I'm pretty kid. Yeah, yeah. Praying. My dad came in and said, I don't know. This kid lost his head. He come out there. He goes, what in the world are you doing in there? So I'm praying in tongues. He goes, what? You're out of your mind. He's looking at me like I'm crazy. I said, well, you'll get it. I brought him down to the river one day. I got him filled. Now he's skibby doo 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 He does his day. Yeah. yeah. He, got his own, he got his own little flow. He does this. Yeah. He does. He cool. He, he got cool tongues. You know, he got like three of them. He just repeats them. I'm like, work what you got. It's good. Yeah. But God bless him. He got it too. You know what I mean? But check it out, right? Now you got Remember that in the beginning? Y'all like, some of you like, I ain't got it. You get it today, right? It's cool. We'll get you loaded up. Right? You're like, oh, yeah, pray. Oh, prayer meeting. Yeah. Have a prayer meeting now. See who shows up. Three ladies. Three. La what happened to all those? Hi, yas. You know why? Where it wore off. <laughs> now, now you got to do it without the feeling. Now you got to do it without the feeling. I love that song. Feelings. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, they're gone. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like marriage. <laughs> yeah. Don't get mad. Yeah. Your honeymoon was great. Thank you. I, not me, though. I, every day I get up, it's like paradise. <laughs> every day is continual paradise. I'm on an eternal honeymoon. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I ain't got no kids. I got no kids with me this week. Praise God. Hallelujah. I got to be good. Come on. Come on. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Praise the Lord. Come on. Back to the anointing. Back to the anointing. Back to the anointing. Come on. Come back to the anointing. What? It's not like he was. Right? But that doesn't mean I still don't do it. Why? Because that's the part, can I do it when I can't see it, when the absence of presence is there. And then what do we do? Watch this. This is what you did. What's wrong with me? What did I do? Am I doing something wrong? Did I admit, right? That was the confession, right? Did I, did I offend somebody? Did I, I mean, what am I doing wrong? No, you're not doing something wrong. You're not doing, maybe it's not what you're doing wrong. It's probably what you're doing right. I go, now I got to do it without feelings. Now I got to do it. You know what I used to call it? Uh, you know, it's funny. You think being old school is good because, you know, I used to call it, I, I used to call it, you just got to do it like, you got to do it beyond feelings. It was kind of like 
kind of like almost like this. You got to just grind it out. You know what I mean? You got to just grind it. Like, I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to get up anyway. Pray anyway. See, that's where you develop spiritual strength. You don't develop spiritual strength when the feelings are there. You develop spiritual strength when the feelings go away. Yeah, that's right. You understand? Know because when does a relationship get tested? Yeah. When the feelings go away. Every relationship gets tested when the feelings go out the window. That's when it gets tested. Because why? Because when the feelings are gone, can you, can you do it without... Well, you know, she probably woke up one day. Pastor Liz woke up one day. Well, he ain't hanging the moon no more. Well, yeah, you're probably right. And neither are you. So what do we do now? Feelings? Come on. No, be serious. Feelings got We got to you, you grind it out. That's what you do. You grind it out. And does the feelings come back? Yeah, they come back, silly. But everybody goes through moments of life. What? Where absence of feelings makes what? The void seem almost tremendous. Because what? I don't feel like. Guess what? You don't live by your feelings. So why, why in the world would God tell you not to live by what you feel, but live by faith, and you don't think you're going to need faith to keep this relationship with him right? Yeah, wow, because you know why? What do you think? Well, you know, God, oh, you know, just live by faith. They walk by sight. They're right there. Blah, blah, blah. No. The just shall live by faith. Come on. We walk by faith and not by sight. Come on, right? So what do you think? You ain't going to need faith. You need faith for the relationship with God just as much as you need faith for the relationship with people just as much as you need faith to release faith. I need faith. I need faith. To, my God in heaven, Pastor Chris, you say, yeah, I got to believe that God's there even when I don't. I believe God's still working for you. Come on, look, I'll give you a couple more. You doing all right? You okay? Doing good? You putting it in? You feeling that strength kind of come kick in gear? Yeah, Will, why? I'm not doing nothing wrong. You know that? Sometimes that's what I think happens, right? We get to that place. Like, oh, my God, what's going wrong? Nothing's going wrong. You're getting closer. Okay? David got that place, man. He got messed up, okay? God's real. The deepest level of worship is praising God in spite of the pain. You know what? Watch this. You want to see something? Friendship. Listen to me. Look at 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 me. You want to know when a friendship or a relationship, when anybody gets tr basically, I would say, I'm going to say it like this. Tested when you see separation and silence. When you see separation and silence, that's when it gets tested the most. So what do you think? You're not going to have separation and silence with God? Sure are. And that's when your relationship's on the wire and it's wavering. Can you still maintain it in that place where it's getting tested? That's growth and maturity. See, this is the whole part. Nobody's going to like it, but you got to go through it. And if you don't go through it, why? Got to. If you don't go through it, you're going to go through it again later on. So go through it and get it over it. And you can feel it in the body. I'm not saying God's done it, but God's trying to bring the body up to another level. Another level of growth means the body's got to do it by faith. It's going to happen in your relationship. You can feel it. It's true. Okay? Here you go, right? Okay? In your friendship with God, you won't always feel close to Him. Okay? Any relationship is going to involve times of closeness, times of distance, and in a relationship with God, no matter how intimate, that pendulum will sing from one side to the other. Then that's when worship gets difficult. Look at a marriage, man. There's times. Come on, pay attention to me. Give me 15 minutes, I'll change your life. There's times, I'm going to use this. God made marriage like a, God made marriage. God made the covenant of marriage. Like he made the covenant of the blood with us. Same covenant. That's why it's important, you know what I mean? The whole deal. It's a blood covenant. Marriage is a blood covenant. From everything to everything. There's little ears in here, you know what I'm saying? The whole deal. Okay? So God goes, okay, here you go. Man, there's times we're going to be... <laughs> right? I'm not even talking intimacy. There's times, right? Everything, right? You're like, we're... then there's going to be times like she's on another planet. Come on, somebody. But what? Yeah, and I'm, yeah, I'm from Mars. She's from Venus or whatever that thing is. I, I believe it, right? So, so what happens? Uh, but watch this. What happens? And it's not as in certain seasons. When does it get trusted the most? When it seems like it's the farthest apart. Come on. But guess what happens? Without those moments of the farthest. Man, this is so good. Without those far apart moments. Man. That's, that, see, anybody could do this one. Can you handle it here? That's when you know you're working with the stuff. 
That's when you know when you're living by faith. That's when you know when you're forgiven. That's when you know when you're blessing. That's when you know you're believing. That's when you know you're going to, because some, now watch this. Now you sort of say, well, I ain't married. That's your relationship with God. Well, he, he touches you and you're vibrating in the altar. Come on, somebody. You know what I got to go back to? You want to know what I got back to? There's so few and far in between sometimes. He say, go back to when I touched you the first time. Man, that thing will carry you to the destiny God has for you. Because I can't live. That's the only moment in life that sometimes you can live off of. Because the last experience is too far gone. you got to go back to the beginning. And when you go back to the beginning and know, that's why I started this church. Because <laughs> they ain't sure ain't because of now. Come on, right? You know what I'm saying? I'm not I'm talking for me. You understand what I'm saying? So, sometimes it's like that. Why are we here? Why are we doing what we're doing? Why are you doing what you're doing? Why are you doing? Why are you here? Could be anywhere you want on Friday. Why are you here? Because I put I got something. I, look, some of you guys I know been here. You've been here. Want to see something with the vision? You've been like this with the vision, and sometimes you're like this. And you know what? Without this, you never go back to this. And everybody flips out when you get this. And you know what they do? They make the stupidest, biggest mistakes of their life. Right here. You want to know why? Airhead. Because they don't they don't know how they don't know how to navigate God. And you know what the first thing they say? I don't fit in. I don't belong. Something changed. I don't know what's going on with church. And then what happens? What? Look. Look at me. Be straight. You were getting ready to walk out the door. But what happened? You went like this. And you're better than you ever been. Because last season, where you're at, can't get you where you're going in the next season. And guess what? If you didn't mature through it, you won't be doing it no more. That's the key. But here's the thing. What do I do when this hits? Everybody freaks out. Freak out. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't belong. I don't, uh. No, you want to know what it is? What, what do you think? How many people? Well, I don't know where God went. Yeah, I tell you what God, God did you like this. This is what God did you. He's like, okay, go do it. God gave you like one of these. This is God. I'll be God for a minute. He did like this. Let's see what you're going to do. Praying. Yeah, okay, pray. Talking, bawling, squalling, flinging snot, crying tears. Now you say, God don't answer my prayers. You know God answers your prayers. But did God answer every one of your prayers instantly? No. Was he hindered? No. No. Was he hindered? No. No, not everything's hindered. But some stuff's on a timeline. Why didn't Abraham come the first week? Come on, guys. Why didn't everything I asked for come instantly? Because I don't know about you, but God's taking too long. For my prayers, he needs to speed it up. <laughs> Come on, right? You with me? You good? Right? If you're, look, if you, if everything was left up to you, wouldn't you guess have it now? Wouldn't you pray in it now? Pray in now? Pray in now. Well, why not? Why would there be no process, right? Would there be? Pray? There it is. We do it by faith. Duh. There it is. But why don't we have it? Because patience gets produced in the waiting. And obtaining promises comes through faith and patience. Hello? And you need faith and patience to become complete and whole. Because without it, it, your character doesn't develop. And you're like a baby. So what happens is your character development comes to the point where now every season of life doesn't make a difference because you're the same no matter what's going on. And then you don't have this kind of Christianity. Whoa, I love God. I don't know what's going on. Whoa, I don't know. What's going on. Whoa. Now you're just like, you flat. You know what? I figured out you flatline. You just, don't make a difference. Like, hey, somebody just gave the ministry a million dollars. Yay, praise the Lord. Somebody just. I don't go up with it. I don't go down with it. Why? Because I'm not moved by any of it. Because I just stay still. And it, I'm not saying get excited. You understand what I'm saying? But it ain't going to make me get all woo hoo woo hoo Because I'm whole. No matter what state I'm in, I'm content. You see it? So what? So stay with me. Get this part right here, and we'll let you go. Here we go, right? You doing good? good. All right, swallow it, because you got to do it. Because you got to get there, okay? It's your name. Okay? This is kind of cool. God, to mature any friendship... There's going to be times of testing it with seemingly periods of separation when it feels like he's abandoned or forgotten and God feels a million miles away. Bottom line, it's called 
I like I say it like this. You might say it's like the ministry time of absence. Boy, this is real doozy, ain't it? We call it spiritual dryness. Kind of feels almost dry. Just going through. Okay, here's the good news. Okay? God, of course, doesn't leave your life. Okay? And the truth is there's nothing wrong with you. Okay? Job said the same way. He said, I feel like God's presence left my life. Job said this. He said, I go east. He's not there. I go west. Can't find him. I don't see him here. I don't see him there. When God seems distant, you may feel that he's angry with you or he's disciplining you for some sin. In fact, God does not do that. Here's the key. We, we can almost often feelings of abandonment or estrangement from God has nothing to do with anything but the test of the faith that we must face. And we must continue this. Here's the key. We must continue to love, trust, obey, and worship even when we have no sense of his presence or visible evidence of his work in your life. The most common mistakes Christians make in worship today is seeking the experience rather than seeking God. They're looking for a feeling, and if that happens, they conclude they worship wrong. Bottom line is, what happens? God often removes the feelings so we don't depend on them seeking the feeling, but we start understanding that that's not worship. Okay? That even when there's not worship, okay? How, okay, here's my question. How do you praise God? This is so good. Okay? I'm going to give you, I'm not going to leave you on a cliffhanger. I'm going to leave you this. Tomorrow we'll come and wrap it up, okay? But here's, here's I want to drop this in your spirit. You sit and meditate on this. How do I praise God when you don't understand what's happening in your life and it seems like God went silent? How do I stay connected in a crisis without communication? You've been, you're in the middle of a crisis and you ain't got no communication. You ever been like that? You ever get there? I'm in the biggest trauma of my life. I don't feel like I can hear nothing. What do you feel like? Feel abandoned. Feel rejected. Guess what? You're not. You're not. You're growing. Because you're hanging on to what you know in the middle of what you can't understand is going on. It's okay. It's good. It's going to help you. Come on, right? Check out. How do you keep your eyes on Jesus when they're full of tears? Wait a minute. This is what you do. You start with this. Okay? I can't give it to you all. I forget it will be here all night. Let me give you this. Let me give you this. I'll, cra- I'll, I'll lock it down. You come tomorrow. I'm going to get you on the cliffhanger and get you in the door. Okay? There is nothing wrong with the process if you're in it. Okay? You feel the anointing in here. Okay? Okay? Seriously, just hear me. It's part of the maturing process of growth. It's uncomfortable, but everybody's got to go through it. Because here's the thing. It would be easy to believe him if everything felt like it was okay. You wouldn't need faith. It would be easy to trust him if you knew exactly what he was going to do. You ever notice something about God? You ever been like this? I'm going to leave you here and we're going to come back. I'll pray for some people. You ever been here in a situation think, what in the world is going on? Why do I got to go through this drama? What in the heck's going on? We know it ain't God. What's going on? Then you come out of it and you look back in it and go, oh, I know exactly what was going on right there. Yeah. Right? How many of those do you have in your life? Probably all of them. But when you're in the middle of it, you can't see what's going on. Why? Because in that place is the trusting. The trusting, come on, is the key to the relationship. And I'm going to leave you at it because i tell you I did it. I went to the homeless ministry one time. It was so dry. Oh, my God. I was preaching for three months. Nothing. It was dry. So dry. It was dead. They didn't want to hear it. I didn't care. I was honoring. I was like, shut up. I'm going to preach anyway. It was bad, Joel. I was hit. They were looking at me like, eh. I was like, shut up. You're going to hear this thing anyway. And I was grinding, man. And man, and they, they thought I went. I told this church, I told the church this a couple stories. I might even say this here. So I'm bouncing around doing my thing. And man, it hit me. I was like, it was dry, dead. And I started, I started like, I, I went off, man. They thought I went crazy. Some of them were like, oh, he snapped out. They, when, they, when, you get the, when you can get those cats nervous, you know you're doing good, man. They're like, he ain't right in the head right now. They seen that crazy eye happen, you know. That's when, that's when we first seen the shift of the hip. The eyes pop out. And I started, and Miss Stacy, this is what I said. 
I start getting, oh, Bishop, I got it. I bounce around. I say, God, I don't care. I don't care about, I don't care you praying. I don't care you answering prayers. I don't care. And homeless people go, oh, my God, he's losing it. I don't care if you speak to me. I don't care if you touch me. I don't care. I don't care if you, I don't care if you give me another sermon. I don't care. I'm, I'm going off. These homeless dudes are getting nervous, like, oh, my God, we're not going to eat today. He's going to, he's going to need evac. This is getting worse by then. And I'm, oh, Garrett, I'm bouncing around. I'm like, and I don't care if God touched me. I don't care if I, God answers another prayer the rest of my life. I don't care. I don't give a rip. I don't, uh, I, and all of a sudden I walk by, and man, I said, I don't care. I'm still going to trust them. I'm still going to do it. I'm still going to preach it. I'm still going to live it. I'm still, and it felt like somebody took a two by four and smacked me across the head with the anointing. Man, that thing kicked in gear. And man, it hit me so hard, and I got it. I said, God, I knew what it was. I didn't know when I was going through it, but I got it in the end. Uh, can you run with vision when it don't look like the vision is coming to pass? Can you still stay on track when you can't see the track no more? Can you still stay in the fast lane? Come on, somebody. When you ain't even got a car. Come on, somebody. Come on, because I'm in the fast lane. Come on, yeah. Yeah, you in the fast lane, all right, on your scooter. Pedaling. You got pro- No, I'll be straight. That's what it feels like spiritually. I got to go in there and pray. Woo! Ain't nobody at the prayer meeting. Come on, somebody. God, pray down heaven. Woo! <laughs> Confess the word. Yay! You going through. You don't understand. You feel like, I'm praying. I'm confessing. I'm, I'm crying. Jesus, where are you? Come on, you know how you do. God! God, why is that forsaking me? Got the, you got the reenactment at the house. God! Why? Crucify me. Right? We all do it, right? We all. He ain't got no problem. Hear me, though. It's, I don't want you to get the wrong opinion of God. He is not. He is not. He is not. Not in your feelings. He totally is. He, he understands your feelings. I'm going to let you know a secret about God. He don't care if you're comfortable. Because at the expense of your growth, let, look, let me help you. We are like, he is our father. We are his children. A lot of you have children. They are your natural children. You're an aunt. You're an uncle. You're a grandma. You're something. You know a kid somewhere. <laughs> and you people that don't got kids, you even worse. Because you're like, what's wrong with that kid? When you go out, you know what I'm saying? So you ready to discipline the kid that ain't even your kid for not proper behavior. So can I ask you a question? Are you, let's use you for, let's use the, I ain't going to say no. I'll be nice to you, the Amish boy. All right. Let's use, let's, let's use the Amish boy here. Little Amish, are you kidding? Let's just use him as a, let's use him as a reference. I love you. You know I do. Let's just use him as a reference. Mom and dad are here. Let's just, let's just have some fun. We got to go home. It's 930. Oh, my God. In heaven. Do you really care about his comfort for his well-being? Thank you very much. <laughs> why? Because, look, why? Because you know life, and you know what he needs to do, and you're going to try to steer him the best way you can. So you, could be, you would like to comfort him, yeah. but for his well-being, you will swat his rear end, even at being 20 years old. Why? 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 Because why? Because you love Because you want him. You love him. All right, I'll give you a quick story. Ready? My guy, he's acting up at home. I'm going to pick on your partner in crime, right? He's at home. He got the mouth, my little one, right? We going to Disney, right? We going to Disney. He pop off in the mouth. The mother got the crazy eye. I said, this is not going to be good. This ain't going to happen. Everybody's like, you ain't going. So that means I'm staying home, which I don't mind, right? I'm like, I'll eat it. Right? Mickey and me are cool. We've seen enough. Uh, so now I got to stay home with him, right? So it's Friday. We ain't going. He crying, pitching a fit. It's a nightmare. His emotions are bad. This is like the first, his sister's going. His sisters are all, he, like, he, literally she went to school to pick up the little one to get her to go, and she seen him walking in between class. He's thinking, I'm going. They changed their mind. No, we did not. I could care less about your feelings. His teacher came to me when I picked him up at school. He was an angel. <laughs> He's angelic. 
I said, he looked at me like, I got to go to the room. He, I cared less about his comfort. It was torture. She's crying. Come on, y'all know what I'm saying. It's parenting. She's crying, right? It's hard to do this, right? I feel like I got, oh, this is great. I got Brute, Pastor Bruton's commission coming. I'm like, this is great. We're going to stay home all day, right? And, and everything was going on. But you want to know how to learn? And as much as I love him, I told him straight up, I said, I'm not worried about your comfort right now. Because I know if you don't get these quality skills now, you ain't going to be who you need to be. And I know what's in your heart to be. Every parent in here that's a parent knows exactly what I'm talking about and been through it. It was not abuse. It's love. And guess what God does? Hey, pass, now let's pick on me. Pastor Chris, I love you, son. But you don't get what you want when you want it. Oh, God, you big meanie. <laughs> big meanie, 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 meanie. Now, trust me. Now, watch me. Now, not yet. Today, no. Why do I got to feel like this? Because you're going to feel some of the stuff I feel. The only reason, I'm going to tell you what God's so good. The only reason why you feel what God feels is so you can understand who he is. Because in the absence of his presence in the moment, you find the answer to life's questions that you can only find in him. If you didn't feel abandoned, you don't know he's your comforter. If you didn't feel fear, you'd never know he's faith. If you didn't feel, I'm not saying they're, they're, they're not real. The feeling feels real, but it's not. But it's okay. It's your emotions. It's cool. How am I going to know he's my deliverer unless I got to get something delivered? I'm not, look, man, everything going through, it's all process. It's all process. You want to know what happens when I go through these seasons? And you go through these seasons? What do we come out on the other side? What didn't kill you made you? Come on. And in the moment, I don't like the process, but I sure like the results. Because the results make me be who he is. And now I start, what happens? What do you start doing? You start reacting like him. You start walking like him. You start talking. You start forgiving what you couldn't forgive. You start forgetting what you think you can forget. You start letting off the you start, stuff starts happening that you could. Why? Because I'm not me no more. I become him. He's molding you and fashioning you in the image and likeness of God. And he's going to do it whether we like it or not. Make the process easier. Know this. I need him. I can't do it without him. And don't put your strength and your trust in yourself. Put it in him. Amen? Come on. Stand up on your feet. Listen. Real quick. If you got to play something, just real slow. I don't know who's going to be here tomorrow. Who's got pain in your body? I got Just lift your hands heaven. Hey, listen, I'm serious. Just listen to me. I'm telling you, this ain't hype. I can't, I can't fabricate it. I can't. <clears throat> I believe, I believe this with all my heart. I'm serious. I wouldn't say it if I didn't believe it. There's a heaviness in this house. Okay, it's fair to say. By the time I get on that plane to get out of here, I'm not going to tolerate it. But you got to help me. You guys got to get ready to bust this place wide open, man. Okay? Everybody's got to do it. Now, here's what I do. We got tonight, we got the foundation. Tomorrow we come. But I need you praying. Sunday morning. I'm going to let it loose. Sunday morning, I want this place packed. I don't care who you got to call, who you got to invite. You get them in this building. I want you to pray. Who prays Sunday morning? Does anybody come and pray? You come, pray with these ladies. The guys show up. Pray with these ladies. Come in this building. Don't make it three ladies in here. You get here early Sunday. You get in these altars. You start praying and believing God. And you get by the Sunday night, you have this breakthrough released. If I'm preaching it, God's revealing it. We're going to hit it. He's going to take care of it. No more limitations. No more spiritual setbacks. No more just holding you back, man. He'll preach, he'll preach Sunday on strong spirit life, whatever he's got in him, and just open this wide open. Get in this house and do this thing. The only way you do it is you drive it out. you got to drive it out. That's the only way. You can, how you do it, you drive it out of your own life first. I'm telling you. So you got to partner up. You might have to have them start praying together, like Skype or something. I don't know. Pray guys with guys, the girls with the girls. Hey, I'm a, like, you guys might start praying together and get Miss Stacy three years to pray. We're praying once a week, Tuesday night, 
half out. Pray in the house. My, John, right? John, right? John might be watching. John was sick, you know. And the other day, they wanted to go to the house, guy in my church. I said, call the phone, call it. I said, call the thing. Put the phone on. You got three minutes. Call. Walk around, pray for him. They did. They went over. Somebody prayed. Come on. You need to edify yourself daily. You got to do it through accountability. You guys, you know what I mean? You guys got to partner up, all you guys. Three, four, you guys get together. Hey, how you doing? What's going on? You praying today? Did you get in the Word today? Come on, man. Did you do it? Guy like Jerry, Joel, get together. Hey, we're going to pray. Five minutes going to work. Five minutes is better than no minutes. Get in the Holy Ghost. You got to stay strong. 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 Thing is this, like if they carry intercession, that's cool, but I got to maintain. Got to build spiritual strength. Every season. When I don't want to do it, I do it. You got to do it. Can't live without it. Make yourself. Don't talk like this in church. No more. Make yourself live strong. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands to heaven. Thank the Lord. Thank you, 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 Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We believe it. We expect it. We receive it, God. We ain't going to leave. It. We're not going to leave this house until the work is done. This week is going to be a paradigm shift. Something's going to shift. Something's going to shift into preaching. Something's going to shift into worship. Something's going to shift into choir. Something's going to shift with the shift. It's going to shift. Something's going to shift with the workers. Something's going to shift with the children's ministry. Something's going to shift with the teenagers. Something, this house is shifted. It's going to another level of glory. It's going to another level of impartation for demonstrations and manifestations of the Holy Ghost. Something's shifting. Something's changing. Something's moving. Something's shaking. Something's going to change in this house like never before. And you're going to see it. You're going to know it. And you're going to understand it's going to happen. I believe it with all my heart. Amen? I believe it. Thank you, Lord. We believe it. We expect it. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Well, praise the Lord. Oh, uh, yeah, I brought two things. Yeah, Pastor Liz will talk about here. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. I just tell everybody. Here, look, you can sit. Stay, stay in the atmosphere. Do what you want. She, I brought these. I only brought two of the new things. But she'll talk to you about it. Just, I only bring it here. Let her talk to you about it. This pathway to promotion things. All this stuff I preached, like tonight. Stuff. I'm telling you, man. People don't understand. You know, you know what happens? I hate, man. That's why I hate the devil. Like, we all felt like, well, what I'm doing wrong. You got. If you're honest with me, what I said to you tonight, you're gonna say, "Man, I, I'm thinking the same thing. Yeah. I'm, do, I'm giving, I'm giving, I'm doing, I'm coming to church, I'm faithful, yeah. right? I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do for long periods of time, and I'm going, what the heck? Why do I get a break? Yeah. And I don't even see a break. And then it's almost like I think it's a demotion. You know what? I'm, I'm crazy. I'm literally crazy in a good way. Well, Not like mental crazy, yeah. but crazy in a good way. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. I want because like you know what I say now. Good God, trust me. Trust me when, it's kind of like, almost like you become a problem junkie. You know, it's like, okay, good. Oh, yeah, look, we got to go believe God for $4 million. yippity doo dot day. Let's do it. Why? Why? Because you know what? I'm ready for it. Brother Norval said something to me one time. and never forget as long as I live. When Brother Norval went and cast the devil, just play real soft. When Brother Norval went and cast the devil out of that kid that went crazy at the mental institution, Right? Remember that story? Kid streaked across the thing, was naked as a jaybird, lost his mind. Brother Norval stood in there, kid, for 24 hours. I asked the same question. He said, you and Lester Summer will ask me the same question other guys did too. I said, here's what I said. Why in the world does God take you? I said, Brother Norval, why did God do, why did God use you? Listen, he makes him drive like 45 minutes, probably a good 40 minutes, right, to Chattanooga? 40 minutes, right? Go right, go left, go right, go left. Pulls in the driveway. Did that? You all know the story, right? The dad was there. He said, you're the guy I seen on TV. He goes in there. And he said, Lester Summer will ask me the same question. And I never got I said, he said, he said, Lester said to me, he said, you know, Norbert, there's probably 1,500 people, 1,500 pastors in the vicinity that could have went to that, that kids. It could have showed up at that doorstep. But God sent you. You know why? And Brother Norval said, no, I don't know why. He said, because you the only one who knew what to do. And I never forgot that as long as I lived. 
And God said to me, and Nor- Brother Norval looked at me, he said, if it's in front of you, you know what to do with it. I said, man, the next meeting I went to, I'm serious, you don't make me remember this, somebody came blind. I was like, my God in heaven, they must be ready to see because if it's in front of me, I know what to do. Yeah, God's not going to put me in his word in front of something I can't handle. Yeah, so what it is, is I got to figure out the key. I asked Dr. Harfush right back, I'm not name dropping. I said, he said something, I'm, I'm catching these pieces. He said, there's a key to unlock every service. You got to find the key. And I was saying, like, I got to find a way to unlock it. So here's my thing. Wait a minute. Is it is it a problem or is it a promotion? Is it abs- is it is it absence or is it or is it access? Because I could get to a realm now I couldn't get to before without it. It's it's crazy because when you see it, it's like ain't no fun. But you know what it is? I could be trusted after I've been tried. Try me. See if I can't be tried. See if I'm not the guy that bounces back. Come on. See if I'm not the guy. You knock me down, I'm getting up. Come on. See if I'm not the guy. That's not pride. Because I had the tears, and I know where my strength comes from. But is access really all about absence? I think so, because how am I going to get greater access if he's... Come on. What? I take Doug. I go, Doug, follow me. Doug, follow me. Doug, follow Right? And I go this. No, now follow me like this. Come on, follow me. Then he can't see me no more, right? Come on, follow me. What, what's easier? It's easier when I'm holding him by the hand and dragging him. But wait a minute, what did he get? He gets greater access with my absence. Think of this. I'm, I'm jacked up because I'm in it. Watch. Jesus is in the earth. He only does so good. He leaves. They do better. It's better for me to go. Don't leave. We like just having you. No, 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 no. I got to go so you can get great. Because if I'm with you all the way, you're going to keep leaning on me. I need you to lean on yourself and show you that you got me in you. You can do the greater work. I want him to stay. He's like, I got to go. Because <laughs> you can't become. Listen to me. You can't become what I created you to be if I stay. So I got to go. And now you got to do. John the Baptist, follow me. No, follow him. I'm decreasing. He's increasing. Go. When access, absence produces greater access. For, it's good for me to go. No, stay with me. No, no, no. You can't understand. You can't become what you need to become with me there. Got to go. I'm telling you, man, you can do this thing. You got to go listen to CD like 100 times. It will sink in your spirit. But I promise you this. Man, I'm not nervous about it no more. I know how to navigate. I got to be quiet. Otherwise, I'll be here all night.